Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It has been a little while since I've done any kind of update. So I thought uh, I'm back in Tampa today um, and was planning on catching up with my videographer. I had live scheduled, I got to meet with a few people. I thought what better opportunity than to sit down and actually just give you some updates and talk about a few things that have been going on and then kind of how I'm going with training and tracking and all of that good stuff. And just before I left, I put up on my Instagram, um, I guess a question box asking you guys what you wanted to hear about, um, I guess from the last eight to 12 weeks or so. So the first thing I think that kind of came up was um, my nutrition and my training. How have I been managing that with all of the moving? And honestly, it's been really challenging. And one of the things that I'm super grateful for are I guess the past four years of, uh, I guess, therapy that I've had because it has instilled the art of or the ability to um, manage my stress and to sit with discomfort. And I think one of the things that has been really challenging when I was growing up was that I probably was put in positions where I was going to do well at something, which is great. Um, so you have a lot of opportunities to excel. Um, but I think I was kind of protected in many ways from, you know, some of the, the harsh realities of life. And I've always said this, I think since I've, you know, moved around, like the more like surprised I am at the types of people that exist. And what I mean by that is I think when I was young, um, I was very protected. I lived in a small town, I believe when I lived in Launceston, Tasmania. Um, the population was like 70,000, uh, maybe a little bit above that. So really small, everybody knew everybody. And I don't know that I ever really encountered anybody that um, were really like nasty or like not having good intentions or that would do the wrong thing. Um, so as I've gotten older, obviously you get exposed to more and more people. Um, and I guess that, that exposure to I'm not going to say toxic people, but just people with a lot of dysfunctional thoughts and behaviors and just, you know, they've been stuck in a way for so long that um, it's really hard for them to kind of step back and see the bigger picture and how, you know, their actions and reactions are impacting others. So I've definitely been privy to some of that and it's been really tough to kind of manage, but I think through all of the therapy, um, it's really given me um, the skills to sit in really difficult situations and kind of have faith that at some point or another you're going to come out the other side and you will prevail <laughs> essentially. So I think the last 12 weeks I have routinely been up until about I'm going to say two o'clock would be like my average bedtime which is crazy and my average wake time, my alarm every morning goes off at 7 a.m. and there have been a couple of mornings where I've had to get up you know, at six because I've got an extra thing squeezed in that day. Um, so if I want to get any kind of activity in, you know, that's kind of, that's what I'm working with. <laughs> so like four or five hours sleep for about three months. Um, so I've kind of been running on fumes to be honest. Um, but I think one of the things that has kind of kept me going is that I do finally feel like I am in a position where I have the autonomy to be me. And I think, you know, starting the female coaching team uh, has been uh, such an awesome and rewarding um, experience. And to finally feel like I'm in a culture, a work culture where everybody is on, you know, the same wavelength. And uh, it's just been a really, really wonderful um, I guess a couple of weeks from a business standpoint, knowing that, you know, I wake up in the morning, maybe I'm tired, maybe I didn't get a really good night's sleep, maybe I haven't trained or eaten very well, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, I think, you know, when you're waking up with a purpose and you really feel committed to, you know, that, that vision, um, and that you're fulfilling your destiny, um, it really just makes it all that much better. So, you know, I am somebody that kind of works with clients on, you know, really feeling like there's meaning in your life. And a lot of the time I've found that people are in jobs that they're unhappy with, um, they're, you know, in unhappy or, you know, unfavorable types of relationships. And I don't just mean romantically, I mean like friendships as well, that, um, you know, they're spending time with people that just aren't serving them. 
So, you know, I think it's really important for you guys listening um, to recognize that, hey, you know, your life might be going a certain way and it's serving you fine, but is there anything that you can like stop and reflect on and, um, you know, remove that might not be necessarily like the best thing for you? So, um, <laughs> That's kind of the, the logic that I've been operating off. Like, I know that I'm doing the right thing. This is serving my purpose. And uh, <laughs> the stress has become a little bit more manageable. But training and nutrition, that has been so far from even average, it's not funny. Um, there were two weeks <laughs> where I recall, I think I got one grocery order. And for like three days straight, I either had the, the choice of using like a few hours to get caught up on some emails um, or I don't know, some other task that's been on my list of to-dos for a while. And, uh, or I could get some more groceries and eat something nutritious. And of course I was like, no, I need to get this like organized. So I'm pretty sure I ate for two days or three days straight, just Greek yogurt and powdered mix-ins. And then I had like a jar of, uh, what's it called, Biscoff spread. I'm pretty sure that and like cookie dough. <laughs> Sorry, literally for like three meals. Oh, and ran like protein shake. So like the ones that I use in my coffee. So as far as like eating like nutritious foods, wholesome foods that I know are good for my body, um, it definitely hasn't been my my best few weeks. And uh, I think based on like how I perceive my body composition, it's definitely oscillated quite a bit more than I'm used to. And I think, you know, that would have previously really bothered me. But again, going through so much therapy and really being proactive about, um, you know, how I think of myself, like what are the beliefs that I hold uh, of me? Um, and that's really changed over the years. I've been so intentional about knowing that I am uh, enough you know, outside of my physical appearance. Knowing that I'm worthy, you know, regardless of what other people might say. Uh, knowing that I'm a good person, regardless of, you know, things that you might hear other people say about you, or, you know, I live on social media, like my job and my business is on this platform. So there are always gonna be people that, um, you know, are criticizing you, um, or, and that, you know, for, for many reasons, it can be jealousy, it might be just, I don't know, <laughs> insert whatever. But um, I think I'm really grateful that I've been so intentional about shifting, um, you know, my, my outlook. Because um, going back just a couple of years, um, particularly when I was kind of in the peak of my competing, um, had I not been able to train consistently, that would have sent me off the cliff um, and because I didn't have any other um, emotional coping skills outside of turning to food for comfort and let's be honest that is a very easily accessible um, you know way to seek out you know immediate gratification and immediate feeling you know feelings of goodness like you know you enjoy food it's pleasurable you enjoy it um, so it, it makes sense why so many people struggle with that um, but I think the way that I've mitigated a lot of the negative thoughts and some of that spiraling negativity, which is, which is not an uncommon thing, um, is to just develop a greater sense of compassion and care. And I think I really didn't like who I was, you know, years ago. I didn't care uh, about me. I thought that, you know, it was only the superficial things that made me who I was. And I think once I kind of broke that down and peeled back the onion layers, um, I just started to have more respect for me as a person, regardless of anything else that I did, I accomplished, how I looked. And that compassion has enabled me to, you know, give myself some grace on days where I am really busy working um, or I don't have the energy to go to the gym. Like I've been so many times um, over the last few weeks that I know I should have gone to the gym and I've just had to sit there and have that kind of hard conversation with myself and go, okay, what are the pros of me doing this? What are the cons? And if I come out neutral, I'm like, okay, well, how do I feel right now? What is my body telling me? And I've had to slow down and really like stop and think about that. Like my, bring myself to my like awareness. And 
a lot of the times I've opted for just rest, like go to bed, or instead of finishing off my daily step target, like when I'm in contest prep, I'd go and walk and get my steps done. Now, like I'm not in contest prep. I'm a normal person trying to live a normal lifestyle that's somewhat healthy. And the right thing for me to do right now is to listen to that, you know, what my body's telling me and my intuition. And it was just sit down and rest or you'll feel better if you unpack that box that's still sitting in your bedroom <laughs> since you've been moved in. So training has not been good, diet has not been good, um, but I also know it's a very temporary like transitional period. Um, my house is all unpacked, everything is done. Um, so yeah, now I really just kind of get to focus on business and I'm starting to think about the possibility of uh, competing. So I was just going through the questions that you guys were asking and somebody said, what's on the cards? Are you still planning on competing this year? Um, obviously there's been a lot of change. Is that still a priority for you? And it is. It's a priority, not because I know I need to do it for me, I'm, I want to stay in this industry and stay relevant in the bodybuilding scene because I feel like there are not enough women or men for that matter that are advocating health and like looking at it from a holistic standpoint. Um, I know I got into the sport for the wrong reasons and it was purely superficial, purely for acceptance, purely for the aesthetic uh, and my physical appearance. And I can now say that through lots of therapy, as I've said so many times, there is an alternative route to feeling um, acceptable, to feeling you know, like you're enough and that you're worthy, um, regardless of how you are looking on the exterior. So I would really like to um, continue to be a face that shows up in these competitions just to show you know, women that you know, I've done this and I've been where some of you are right now, which is sole focus is being you know, aesthetic and looking a certain way to feel like you're validated. Uh, and, and it's like, that's your identity. But there's this other way that you can you know, still enjoy it for the experience and still love yourself, you know, regardless of that. So I have lots of motivations to compete and I'm also super competitive. <laughs> so I haven't won world championships with this federation yet. So this will be my sixth year coming back to the WBFF um, as a fitness diva. So world championships is the first week of August uh, this year. So I'm, I've been thinking about what kind of prep I want to do um, I've done as short as eight weeks, which was my last World Championships. Um, that was probably a more of an anomaly because I, was, I knew I was going to come in a little bit softer. Um, had I tried to do an eight week prep with a, like a higher, better conditioning, um, that wouldn't have happened. It would have been too aggressive and I would have sacrificed too many other things, including my mental health and probably my physical health too. So I think I'll probably do like a 14 week prep um, where I've got maybe two or three uh, intermittent diet breaks, um, you know, sc scattered throughout. And I'll look at my calendar and see what other speaking engagements I've got, if there's any travel or anything coming up. Um, and I'll probably plan some periods at maintenance throughout that 14 week period. So there'll probably be 11 weeks of dieting, like being in an intentional calorie deficit and then I'll put three weeks, taking it up to 14 in total, um, at, you know, maintenance. So that's my, my plan so far. So it will be May 1st is kind of around the time frame that I would like to start my prep. And I do not want to have to go too aggressive uh, with my fat loss. So just to give you a, a, a rough idea, um, I don't want to have to target a weekly rate of weight loss of more than 0.006% of my body weight. So if I work out, if I start at 65 kilograms, for example, um, that means that every week I'm trying to target 0.39, we'll round that up to 0.4 um, of a kilogram of weight loss. So if I've got 11 of those weeks, we'll multiply that with 11. That means that I'm going to be losing about 4.3 kilograms. So my stage weight 
should be about 60.7. Now, as I'm getting closer to the stage day or show day, if I don't think that I'm lean enough, and it's probably going to be like the last four weeks, I may increase that target weekly rate of weight loss. Um, and it might be a little bit more aggressive. So it could be 0 0.00, let's say eight times uh, 65. So that means I'd be looking at losing about half a kilo, maybe for the last four weeks. And I'll dip just under 60 kilograms. And that's kind of assuming that I haven't made major changes in my body composition since my last show. Um, I have been working on my shoulders, so I might weigh in a little bit heavier because I've added some muscle uh, and same with my glutes. You guys have probably followed me along on my glutes and shoulders program on the Workout Builder. So we'll see. So that's the plan for competition. Um, and that means that I want to maintain my weight around 65 kilos. And right now I've got no idea what I weigh because <laughs> I haven't been on a scale. I can't tell you when. I've been too busy to get on the scale. <laughs> so. Um, that's my plan for, for competing. Um, I think I want to wrap up, I guess, my, my life update with, uh, I guess, some stuff on carbon because I hadn't tracked forever. And I think just in the last few weeks, um, during the move especially, where um, I'm driving like four hours um, from Tampa to Fort Lauderdale, and I've had to do that multiple times for various trips for different signings and, just a whole host of stuff. It's meant that like routinely, I've lost about a day <laughs> due to travel. Um, and I don't have a day to give, like I'm just really busy. So, um, and also that's kind of cutting into the time that I would usually, you know, prepare meals and do some batch cooking and just be organized so that my week runs smoothly and that I've got, you know, nutritious, wholesome food choices available. And I just mentioned like, I didn't have that last week and the week before. So uh, I've actually gotten back onto tracking just this week. So I'm gonna do a screen recording for you here and I'll show you a little bit about um, where I'm at with that. Okay, so I'm currently in the app. If we go back over to the diary view, you can see I've already started putting a few things in uh, today. We'll scroll across. Oh no, I haven't, I lied. That was yesterday. <laughs> but anyways, I've got to do that for today. Um, if we go to me, uh, and then we can go to calories. You can see there for the last few days, I have done a much better job at tracking. So this was me identifying, okay, I think I've probably gotten a little bit past where I know I feel comfortable or where I feel good. Um, and my habits have definitely strayed a little bit too far outside, you know, what's going to keep me healthy. And that's not just like from how I look, but like how I feel. So this was kind of one of my forms or methods of staying accountable uh, and self-monitoring, which we know if we look at all the research, the people that are most successful at long-term weight maintenance are the people that self-monitor. So I've jumped back into tracking and you can see my average weekly intake this week since last Wednesday was 15, 17. But I've had quite a flux of calories, which you can see, and that's okay. We've talked about uh, calorie cycling before, but my highest day was 1971. Uh, I've had a 1797, and then my lowest day here was 1175. And that is a check-in day when I'm working with clients, and I know I was stuck on that chair <laughs> for many, many hours. And then by the time you know I actually remembered to eat, it was already dinner time. So I just had a normal sized meal put myself to bed and I wasn't super hungry. I think that's because I've been eating a substantial amount of calories uh, and I haven't been exercising. So we can see my averages there and that's, uh, it rolls on. So as I scroll across the page, you can see that it will show you what that seven day average looks like. So for the last seven days, I'm actually at 1430 and that's because I'm intentionally going about eating in a very small deficit for me. So based on the targets that I'm working towards right now, which is 1424, um, that's setting me to lose about 0.3 of a kilogram per week. So my maintenance calories are probably sitting at about 1850 to 1900 based on my current levels of very much inactivity. <laughs> so um, let's go and take a look at my protein. So you can see here, it's been a little bit hit and miss, but for the most part, I mean, this looks pretty steady. 
um, the average is about 132 and that's about 10 to 20 grams less than what I used to eat at. And I think from all the years of competing where, you know, protein has needed to be the priority or as calories get lower and lower and lower um, and I'm needing to kind of get rid of the final last little bits of body fat, I tend to gravitate more towards those high protein foods um, in efforts to make sure I don't over consume fats or carbohydrates. Uh, and part of that decision is around, uh, I guess, the thermogenic effect of food. And also being that lean, I'm trying to preserve my lean body mass. And the last thing that you want when you're in a deficit is to be under eating protein. And then what happens when there isn't any other energy available coming into you? Your body looks to your own you know, amino acid stores to break those down. And of course it goes to those lean tissues for that energy. And that's not a great thing when you're trying to maintain a really muscular physique. So I tend to eat a little bit more. So I have very intentionally made some big changes to how I eat in my off season. Part of that is when I'm you know, not competing, I'm usually eating in more of a calorie surplus, which I gain some body fat, which is fine. Um, so I've got extra you know, energy available to you know, make some gains if I want to. Um, and it also frees up my food choices for foods that I don't normally eat when I'm competing, um, or certainly not in the same quantities. Um, I still try to enjoy a wide variety of foods when I am competing, um, but I cannot just have the abundance or the quantity that I would want to if um, I wasn't you know, competing. Obviously, there's a significant difference in my daily calorie intake. So, my protein is around 130 and it'll probably end up at around 150 as I enter into that fat loss phase and as calories are getting a little bit lower. Carbs and fats, I'm sure they're gonna be like this. Yep, of course. Right now it's a beautiful trend down. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> so it started the week at 206 and uh, ended the week at 106. Um, so I've obviously oscillated my, my carbs and fats here to get my weekly average. And you can see exactly that. There's one day here where my, car, my fats were 75, and then there's another day here where it's as low as 28. And that's about the bottom of the range when it comes to fats. I've mentioned in previous updates the importance of consuming an adequate amount of fat, particularly our essential fatty acids. Um, because your body cannot synthesize omega-3 or omega-6, so these are fatty acids that have like a double bond instead of like a saturated fat which has a single bond kind of connecting the, the center carbon atom. Um, so because we can't synthesize those, you do need to, to eat them. <laughs> so I really try to go out of my way to make sure that I'm having some kind of seafood. Um, I really enjoy eating fish out. I hate cooking it at home. So I'm always eating seafood when I go to restaurants. Um, to make sure I'm getting like that baseline uh, essential fatty acid. Um, if I dip too low below that uh, for any given period of time, and I've unfortunately seen people do this and it's just, it's not healthy. Um, it starts to impact your hormone production um, because you no longer have, you know, the fatty acids that are creating some of these hormones. Um, it also uh, is important for you know, some of the uh, extracellular matrix of our cells and some of the physical structures uh, of our body's cells. So, and also, I guess, for the absorption of vit fat-soluble vitamins. So if we don't eat an adequate amount of dietary fat, um, any fat, um, um, fat-soluble vitamins, so they are A, D, E, and K, when we're eating food, we can't actually break it down. It's no longer bioavailable to us. So that is pretty low for me, 28. That's more like a contest prep, but it just goes to show you my food choices are pretty flexible. But the one thing that stays pretty dang consistent uh, is my protein intake. Um, and, you know, obviously I'm trying to intentionally meet a certain amount of calories at the moment so that I can kind of recuperate and get myself back into some good behaviors and habits around um, eating. So that's carbon. I don't get to do a check-in just yet because I don't have a weight. So I'm going to make a priority, I'll make it a priority this week to hop on a scale and just find out where I'm at. Um, and I know that's really daunting for a lot of people because, um, you know, there's this constant fear. Um, there is an anxiety around seeing those numbers move up and down. Um, 
So the way that I've kind of combat that over the years is to take a neutral approach to the scale. So even when I'm dieting and doing fat loss, um, as that number goes down, I try not to react in a positive way to a drop. I observe the drop and I try to view it as neutral. I just kind of say to myself, okay, cool, my weight dropped, hmm, awesome. And if it goes up, I try to have that same neutral response. So I'm not overreacting and making like one way or the other, um, you know, more positive or one more negative. Um, and that seems to have really, really helped actually. And then of course, the more you become educated about the variables that influence um, your body weight on the scale, and there are many because there are so many things that change your total body water. Um, from your uh, training, we have an acute inflammatory response to exercise, which causes your body to retain a lot more water, and that's um, uh, the reason that that happens is to help with nutrient delivery. Um, there's also your dietary intake, fiber specifically, the types of fiber, sodium intake, the temperature outside, if you're sweating a lot versus being in a cool temperature, your total body water is more subject to fluctuation. So I think once you can kind of start to see your weight change in response to some of those things that have nothing to do with body fat, it really helps build confidence and it helps you recognize that, oh, you know, the, the scale actually isn't and shouldn't be the only measure of progress. It's just a variable that can help guide, you know, which direction I'm moving. So that's probably enough for one check-in, guys. Um, I am happily enjoying Fort Lauderdale. It is freaking beautiful. If you guys haven't been or heard of, maybe you're from another country and you're like, where's Fort Lauderdale? It is located in Florida on the East Coast. It is beautiful, like year round. It is like gorgeous aqua blue water. Right now it's the middle of winter and it's still been like the coolest it's getting down to. It's probably like 20 degrees Celsius or, you know, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it might be a little cooler like in the wee hours of the morning, but it's been so nice. I get to look at the water every day and I am surrounded by extremely uh, positive, like growth mindset, you know, individuals who inspire me to just keep just thriving on life. <laughs> so anyways, I, I hope that you enjoyed this quick little update. So guys, if you want to find out any more about any of our, our coaching services, uh, please either reach out to me, leave a comment here, or the best way that you can get in touch with us, particularly when it comes to coaching, uh, is checking out our website. So it's uh, www.hbnutrition.com.au australia <laughs> um, that's where you'll be able to find all those details so please make sure you like and subscribe uh, to my channel and i look forward to seeing you at my next video